Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. In last week's video, I went one by one and showed you all the turtles that I owned, which are mostly the species Diamondback Terrapin because they're my favorite. But I started referencing a lot of things, concentric, ornate, northern, a lot of things that maybe not everybody knows about. So I figured that this week I would clarify some things and go through the seven subspecies of Diamondback Terrapin. If you own a Terrapin, most likely it falls into one of these subspecies. Well, it has to fall into one of those subspecies or a combination of any of them. So terrapins have a really massive native range. They're all along the eastern seaboard of the United States and wrap over all the way west to Texas. So I don't want to get into what defines a species versus a subspecies. We're just going to talk about general identifying factors for each of the seven subspecies. So before we begin today's video, in case you guys don't know, one of my turtles had six perfect little beautiful hatchling turtles and I'm giving away one of those little terrapins. That ends in just a couple of days, so make sure you head over to this video, click there, follow all the rules, and you will be entered to win one of my baby turtles. Also, make sure if you guys aren't already, hit the subscribe button. It's fun, it's easy, and if you hit it, dogs won't bark at you like that one just did over there to me. Also, a quick and brief shout out to all my current patrons who are helping support my videos. They encourage me to put out more videos and more content for you guys, and this is something that they've been wanting for a while. So here it is. Let's begin, shall we? So the first subspecies of terrapin that we're going to talk about is the northern diamondback terrapin. Sunlight. Oh, Lord. That's Malaclemys terrapin terrapin. They are native to all the way up in New York, New Jersey, and all the way down to Virginia. They can either be extremely dark or extremely extremely light in color and they either have little polka dot specks on their skin or they can have these big bold markings. Now they just, they come in so many different colors and patterns that it's really hard to describe. They can be as dark as this one here or as light as something like this terrapin here. They can have beautiful white skin, they can have blue skin. In the hobby though, usually when we say a northern diamondback terrapin, we're referencing a northern, that's the subspecies, and then usually we're talking about one with the little speckled pattern. If we say concentric, that just refers to like the squiggle pattern on their face and on their skin and the concentric rings on their shell. Usually Usually when you say concentric, you mean the northern subspecies. It's a little confusing, I know. So that's the first subspecies of diamondback terrapin. So then we move down to the south and we're gonna be getting into like North Carolina down to Georgia. That's the Carolina diamondback terrapin. That's Malaclemys terrapin Carolina, I believe. No. Malaclemys terrapin centrata, stupid Dan. I allegedly have one which is flipper, but they're nearly impossible to distinguish from the northern counterparts, unless you're like, you've been working with them for a long time and you study them and you know their morphological traits and basically they're practically indistinguishable from their northern counterparts, but the centrata, the Carolina terrapins are almost impossible to get in captivity. So most likely if you have a terrapin, it's a northern. If we keep on moving down to the south, we're gonna get to the east coast of Florida. That's the Florida East Coast Diamondback Terrapin. That's Malaclemys Terrapin Tequesta. They're not very common in captivity just because they're usually very dark and have kind of dull colorations and people don't find that appealing when there are other variations that in my opinion look a lot nicer and if you want something dark odds are you can just get a northern. The northerns are probably the most common in the pet trade. So then if we keep on moving down from the East Coast we get to the South. That's where we get to a very interesting subspecies. You're gonna get to the mangrove Diamondback terrapin, Malaclemys terrapin rhizoferrarum, which are named after the mangroves that they inhabit. So these are a very unique, distinct, and the rarest of the seven subspecies. They have very dark purple skin, these big black bold markings, and are pretty much not available in captivity at all. Um, they're extremely rare, extremely hard to come by even in the wild, and what's wild needs to stay wild. I don't even like talking about them because it could fuel poaching. If you poach, unsubscribe and die. So the next terrapin that we're gonna talk about, we start getting to the west coast, sort of like the Gulf Coast of Florida. Those are the ornate diamondback terrapins. That's Malaclemys terrapin macrospelota. They usually have like these black shells with yellow spots on their scoots in the middle of them, unless they happen to have the flower back trait like 
Crush has. She is an ornate diamondback terrapin, but flowerback meaning that she's got that yellow coloration coming in. Normally they look like Nilla, who is also an ornate diamondback terrapin, but doesn't have that weird flowerback characteristic going on. Those are also very much available in captivity, plenty of people breeding them. They're just way more expensive than the northerns. So then as we keep moving along Florida, we're going to get into that integration zone and we're going to reach the Mississippi diamondback terrapin that are sometimes available in captivity, but not very often. That's Malaclemis terrapin pileata. They're going to have those dark shells, those really, really dark shells and that peppering pattern on their skin, which is really interesting and kind of beautiful. Very similar to the East Coast Florida, but its own distinct subspecies. Those guys are usually very, very dark and I have some example pictures, but the only way that you can really tell them apart is just by having seen them enough. It's really difficult to distinguish. So like I said, those guys are available in captivity sometimes, but not very often. Some select people have them and have bred them, but not really that many. And then the final of the seven subspecies is the Texas Diamondback Terrapin. That's Malaclemis Terrapin Littoralis. If anyone is selling you something that they claim is a Texan, it's probably just a very light colored Piliata. That's just because Texas has not allowed the harvest of terrapins in years, years, and years past. Therefore, it's very uncommon that anyone has any of the true Texas subspecies, let alone they're breeding them. So the only real way to begin telling the subspecies apart is by seeing enough of them. So I have a few northern diamondback terrapins. That's Bean, that is Urkel, um, and that is Mochi and Crouton. They're all that concentric phenotype, though, that I was talking about. I don't have any regular northerns. I used to, but I don't now. Flipper is allegedly a Centrata, a Carolina Diamondback Terrapin, but no real grounds to go off of except for how she looks. And then I just want to touch on the fact that because they are all Diamondback Terrapins, even though they're different subspecies, they can mix as we know. So Pancake is half ornate and half northern. They're two subspecies that would never mix in nature, but a good friend of mine had a female ornate and a male northern together, and together they made Pancake, and Pancake got with Bean, who's full northern, and so now I have hatchlings that are one-fourth ornate, three-fourths northern, which are kind of weird, and I don't like integrades for captivity, but that's a whole nother topic. So in general, those are the seven subspecies of terrapin. You're most likely to find northerns. I'm more than happy to identify what subspecies you have if you want to DM me or email me or whatever, just because I always like looking at terrapins. And if somebody happens to have a mangrove diamondback terrapin, talk to me, because uh, they're like impossible to find. So I hope that this sort of cleared up some confusion that some people may have had. Uh, it's just basically you have to get to know what they look like. You have to see enough terrapins to start differentiating between the subspecies. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two and if I didn't help you at all then I have failed you in this video. Thank you guys again and I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one.